In the next thirteen sections, from section five to section seventeen, we will talk about ligands. Section twenty-two point five, carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a very weak sigma donor. The sigma bond between the transition metal and carbon monoxide is often weak. But at the same time, carbon monoxide is a very good pi acceptor, which results in pi back bonding. So in this picture, it shows you the Lewis structure of carbon monoxide. You have two lone pair electrons here. Two lone pair electrons here, and a triple bond between carbon and oxygen. This carbon may donate two electrons to the transition metal, and this is sigma bonding. And this bond is often weak. At the same time, if the transition metal has d electrons, it is possible for this transition metal to donate d electrons back to the carbonyl ligand. How? Could that be? Well, remember we have a triple bond here, so there's a sigma bond and two pi bonds. There are pi bonding orbitals in this carbon monoxide. At the same time, there are two pi star anti bonding orbitals, and both of them are empty. So one of these two with the right orientation, so this one, on the same plane as this d orbital. May interact with this d orbital in a constructive manner. Over here, the d electrons from the transition metal can be shared in this empty pi star anti bonding orbital. So, really, if you look at this picture, it's equivalent to the formation of this pi bond between the metal and the carbon. Look, there's two lobes. Constructive interference. Look at this constructive interference. Now there's another bond between the metal and carbon. So when this carbonyl ligand is bonded to a transition metal, very likely you have a sigma bond, and at the same time, you have pi back bonding.、Uh, there are exceptions. So if you have titanium four plus or scandium three plus. Ah,、uh, there's no d electron, and there's no way for you to observe this kind of pi back bonding. So you have to have d electrons to have this kind of pi back bonding phenomena, and then this metal can donate d electrons to the empty pi star anti bonding orbital on the ligand.、Uh, overall, it's like this:、uh, this carbon monoxide donates two electrons. Lone pair electrons to the metal. This is a sigma bond. At the same time, this metal can donate d electrons into the empty, empty pi star anti bonding orbital.、Uh, if this、uh, pi star and this d orbital are on the same plane, you have actually constructive interference here. Constructive interference here, and then you form a pi bond. You form a pi bond. And now this uh, becomes uh, the lone pair electrons on the oxygen atom. So in this picture, you have a CO double bond. Okay, this is because one of the two pi bonds is broken, and you form a pi.、Uh, you form a pi bond between the metal and carbon. So it's、uh, actually a double bond right here. Uh, what if you put another carbonyl group on this side? Well, if you put another carbonyl, carbon, oxygen, on the left hand side, well, it can also interact with this same d orbital, all right. But if this d orbital contains two electrons, and then we want to say, well, it's a three center, one, two, three, three center, two electron pi bond. So the bond order really is one half here and then one half here, all right. So there are three centers: carbon, metal, carbon, all right, and they do overlap、uh, in a constructive manner. The interference is constructive, and over here you need to use a white lobe here and a dark lobe here, right? 
but then you have only two electrons to be shared by the three centers. So the bond order here is only one half. The bond order here is also one half. Uh, now we're just talking about just one d orbitals. What if you have like dxy, dyz, and tzx? And then if you have six, this carbonyl ligands, well, then you can form pi bonds between this same transition metal and all six carbonyl ligands. So you have six pi bonds, but each pi bond has a bond order of one half. In total, you have three pi bonds. The total pi bond order is three. Okay, I'm sorry, six pi bonds, but each pi bond is a partial pi bond. Uh, it consists of only one electron, so each pi bond has an order of one half. In total, you have a pi bond order of three between the transition metal and the six carbonyl ligands. Now, if you look at uh, the vibrational frequency of a free uh, carbon monoxide molecule, I think it's roughly 2100 uh, wave numbers, uh, 2100 reciprocal centimeter. Uh, but uh, its vibrational frequency, or actually wave number, is smaller uh, in a transition metal carbonyl complex due to this pi back bonding. Uh, it can be as low as uh, 1700. Uh, this wave number is uh, the typical wave number of a CO double bond. So sometimes you do form a CO double bond like this. Uh, sometimes it's just slightly smaller. That means the pi back bonding uh, effect is not quite si significant. Uh, but very often you see wave numbers uh, within this range, like 1800, 1900, something like that. Well, this is because when you have a hexaamine a uh, transition metal complex, very likely uh, each uh, pi bond formed between this metal and this carbon uh, contains only uh, one pi electron on average. And the bond order is uh, only uh, half uh, between this metal and the carbon. So I would say uh, the bond order between the carbon and this oxygen in that kind of situation is between two and three. So this is bond order of two, this is bond order of three, so usually it's kind of in between. Uh, this uh, carbonyl ligand may be bonded to multiple transition metals. Uh, in this case, uh, you will have to specify uh, the number of transition metals uh, bonded to the same carbonyl ligand. Uh, this is the simplest case, so you don't have to specify you know, mu sub n dash. Over here, it's mu sub two because this same ligand is bonded to two different transition metal centers. So it's mu2 dash carbonyl dash and whatever here. Uh, over here, this is mu3, uh, the same um, carbonyl ligand is bonded to three uh, transition metal centers. Uh, over here, this is a really bizarre case. So first, uh, this ligand is bonded to two transition metals. So you have to specify mu dash or mu sub two dash. Uh, but then over here it says eta two. That means over here this uh, same ligand uh, may form two bonds with the same transition metal. We are two points of attachment. All right. So this same ligand uh, may form two bonds with the same metal. And there are two points of attachment in the same ligand. So we we'll have to specify eta 2 so that we know uh, this uh, uh, carbonyl ligand is forming two, two bonds, one via oxygen, one via carbon to this metal.